Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So this is an interesting article from Bloomberg. It says that the New York MTA, that's the Metropolitan Transit Authority, lost $690 million last year due to fare and toll evasion. About 400,000 subway riders skip paying fares every day. And you have bus riders that are dodging payment that account for the largest share of losses. This is interesting because jumping the subway turnstile is something that's done without anybody watching, whereas not paying the toll when you're walking onto a bus is done directly in view of the bus driver. So it takes a little bit more balls to evade the toll on a bus than it does to evade the toll for the train. So that was something that was actually surprising to me as somebody who's taken the train and the bus from 2002 through 2018 in New York City until I finally turned my brain on and got an e-bike and massively increased my quality of life, not just by being able to be above ground in a nice place when I travel, but also by starving the beast that is the MTA. It says New York's MTA, the biggest mass transit provider in the U.S., lost $690 million last year due to fare evasion, according to a new report. The operator of New York City subways, buses, and commuter rail lines, as well as seven bridges and two vehicle tunnels, is losing revenue as it works to restore ridership and fare box collections to pre-pandemic levels. Weekday subway ridership is about 70% of 2019 usage, and the report estimates that 400,000 riders enter the subway system every single day without paying. 400,000 people enter every single day without paying. Now, I'm not quite sure how they estimate that. I'm not sure if they've added something, some sort of motion detector or sensor around those subway turnstiles so that they could see when someone jumps over it. But just the idea that you have 400,000 people every single day. I mean, New York City has uh, 8.2, 8.5 million people approximately around there. So you're looking at, I mean, that's like 5% of the population that's just decided to say, you know what, F you, I'm not giving you money anymore. And I'm honestly happy to hear that. And I'll tell you why later. Fare evasion is at crisis levels across the transit system, and the problem is much bigger than everyone thinks. Rosemond Pierre Lewis, co-chair of a special panel that authored the report and executive director of the McSilver Institute for Poverty Policy and Research at New York University, wow, that, that, that's a mouthful, told reporters Wednesday at Grand Central Terminal when the MTA released the report. Turning the tide in these sobering numbers is mission critical. About 13.5% of subway riders failed to pay in the last quarter of 2022, up from 3 to 6% before the pandemic, according to the report. Of the estimated $690 million annual loss, buses accounted for the largest share, with $315 million. Subway evasion cost $285 million, and about $46 million was due to drivers avoiding tolls and Commodore Rail evasion totaled $44 million, the report said. Mahanel's goal is to cut fare and toll evasion losses by half within three years across the MTA system. It's not just mass transit. The MTA is focusing on going after vehicles with obscured or fake license plates. That's been a big thing since COVID. You may have noticed ever since COVID, a bunch more people in New York City had paper plates. And what I've noticed is there's almost a direct correlation between people that have paper plates and people whose vehicles look almost completely destroyed and people whose vehicles are regularly driving in an insane manner. And I've come to the snap judgment conclusion, feel free to tell me if I'm being an asshole here, that when I see a paper plate in a car, I stay the F away from it. Before COVID, eh, no big deal. After COVID, you you printed that out at home on your shitty Epson and you're keeping it on there, most likely because you're not allowed to register your car, most likely because in the past you've driven like crap or have committed numerous felonies. So I'll just let you pass by me from time to time. And I've learned this lesson through watching the way some people drive with those obscured plates. By all means, merge right in, my friend. In the last six months, we have impounded dozens and dozens of super luxury automobiles owned by people who owe New Yorkers in excess of $50,000 or $100,000. Jano Lieber, the MTA's chief executive officer, or told reporters. We're not going to stop doing that because it's an outrage to ride around a Bugatti and a Mercedes and stiff New Yorkers who are just trying to get to school or work on the transit system. I'm all for the people that are evading tolls. I'll be honest with you, and I'm, we're, we're going to get to that later. To combat evasion, the panel said that the state-run transit agency should update its subway infrastructure with taller emergency exits and gateways with plexiglass doors that prohibit riders from jumping subway turnstiles. See, this is not going to work, and I'll tell you why. The way that the... The ideology that persists in New York is that the people that are jumping the turnstiles are the disenfranchised. And if anything you do to make it harder for the disenfranchised to get on the transit system is going to be viewed as you're specifically targeting this particular group of disenfranchised people, this specific group of people who live below the poverty line, and that is evil, and that is bad, and that is horrible, and that is going to result in protests, it is going to result in aggravation, it is going to result in more tension, which is just going to make things worse for everybody. It's going to turn things into more of a pressure cooker, and it's just, I, I don't see this actually working in any way, shape, or form, and I, I just, uh, 
See, I, I don't see that working. Enforcement should be a laddering up strategy according to the panel. First time offenders would receive a warning while second evasion would bring a 100 fine where the non-paying rider would get back half of that amount in a preloaded Omni card to access transit. So they're trying to essentially fine you. So you're going to take somebody that doesn't, that doesn't have money to get on the train. You're going to take poor people that, that don't have money to get on the train and then you're going to find them a fine that they're not going to pay and you're going to give them half of the fine that they don't pay back on a card to try and condition their behavior to use the Metro card because you already have it. But again, this is, this is based on the idea that the person that is doing that is going to pay the fine to begin with, LOL. To help lower income families, the panel is urging New York City to expand the Fair Fares program, which offers qualifying residents 50% subsidy on subways and buses. Another half a million residents could access the program if the city lifted the eligibility cap to 200% of the federal poverty level from 100%, according to the report. Expanding the program would cost $61.5 million in additional funding, which, again, I really don't know where you're going to get that from because, as I've said in many of my prior videos, they have a $100 billion budget already, and they have no idea what to do with it. So why am I for fare evasion? Why am I for people jumping the subway turnstiles? Why do I want to see that number go from 5% of New Yorkers to 100% of New Yorkers? The reason is because they are never going to fucking change unless they are forced to. The beast needs to be starved. And right now, the beast is partially starved. But in my opinion, it needs to be fully starved. I know what people are going to say. A lot of what's wrong with the subway is COVID, COVID, COVID. This article came out over three years before COVID in the New York Times. New York subways are not just delayed. Some trains don't run at all. It turns out that the route, Lexington Avenue line in New York City, is regularly failing to meet its train schedule, especially during rush hour, leading to dozens of trains being canceled every day and reducing the system's capacity by tens of thousands of riders, according to an analysis by the New York Times. And this is what it looks like. This is why I always, by the way, I've avoided having an office that's anywhere near the four, the five, or the six train in Midtown. Oh my God, I don't want to go anywhere near that. I used to complain about the L train being bad. You are literally a sardine in a can here. Look at this. You are, you are literally a sardine in a can, and you are paying to get on here. And if you just do any sort of Google search for this, you will, like, I mean, like, again, this is not exaggeration. You are literally, again, the, the big reason that I got an e-bike is because at one point, I got tired of doing this. Like, I, I used to take the G train to the L train to get to work. And in the early days, I used to live around Canarsie, so I would take the L train from the very last stop all the way in. And for a good portion of your ride, you're literally doing this to fit in so like, that's horrible and you're standing like that for an hour and you know many people who've lived by the f train at the end of uh, end of the line would hear the this f train is skipping avenue u and going straight to coney island this f train is stopping everybody must get off get a shuttle bus this f train is going nowhere take the n train like there is so many times that you would get in the system expecting your ride to be 30 minutes and your ride becomes an hour and 20 minutes because none of the trains fucking function. Even when you guys had a considerably larger amount of money to work with, nothing worked. So why am I going to give you more money now? So I have to imagine people are looking at this and they're going, hmm, you know, half of the time that I need to take the L train, there's a shuttle bus between Lorimer and Myrtle Wyckoff, another shuttle bus between Myrtle Wyckoff and Broadway Junction, another shuttle bus between Broadway Junction and Canarsie. When I take the G train, there's always a shuttle bus between Metropolitan Avenue and Bedford Notion, another shuttle bus between Bedford Notion and Church Avenue. And now you guys are going to raise the rates so that I'm paying an additional 20 to $40 a month for my unlimited Metro card compared to what I was paying just a few years ago and the service is going to be shittier. And above all, when I go on the train, I have to share a subway car with a guy that sounds like this. They don't care. They're going to charge you more money with each passing year. Nothing is going to get better. It's always going to smell like piss. It's always going to be disgusting. They're never going to do anything about the fact that there are lunatics on many of the trains that scream and get worse and worse and worse and worse with each passing year over the past three to five years. And my personal favorite are what they do when they actually do have a budget. My personal favorite is the guy that did something. He, oh, my God. Uh, this guy got over $344,000 in overtime. This is one of the highest paid MTA employees of all times. This is the way that they manage your money. Highest paid MTA employee in 2018 sentenced to eight months in overtime fraud scheme. So you're watching your fare go up and then you're reading about people that are getting $344,000 in overtime. It's horribly managed. 
from top to bottom, it is genuinely horribly managed. And the sad part of it is that when you go to virtually any other city in the United States, if you have zero dollars in your pocket, you're just not getting around. You're screwed. You're destitute. You are stuck. You are not free. And one of the great things about New York City, and one of the things that I will continue to say until this day, is that you can be completely broke. You can have $10 left in your pocket, and you can do house call jobs around the city. You can go from the poorest part of the city to the most expensive part of the city. You can meet people on Wall Street. You can meet people in the projects in East New York. You can meet all different types. You can go to the university, LaGuardia College. You can go to every part of the city and do work riding the train for a few dollars. You can get from one point to another point very cheaply. You do not have to spend $6,000 getting a used Toyota Camry. You do not have to spend one to $200 a month on car insurance. You do not have to spend money on gas and maintenance and parking and everything else. You can be completely destitute and broke and get around the city. There's a lot of potential with this. I like the fact that New York City has a subway. I like the fact that there are ways for poor people to get around. The problem is that they are never going to fix any of the serious defects with the system and the biggest defect with this system above all is the fucking management none of that is going to be fixed unless the beast is starved and when i say starved i don't mean five percent of people not paying their fare i mean like 50 percent of the city just saying you know what screw you i'm not paying this much every single month for trains that have not worked properly for 10 fucking years you can you know how many times like between 2003 to 2018, that the L train would die right before the Myrtle Wyckoff stuff. Like, it would just either not just be a shuttle bus. I'm not talking about the shuttle bus to Broadway Junction and the shuttle bus from Broadway Junction to Canarsie. I'm talking about the train gets stuck for like 20 minutes. And this is not like a bus where if it gets stuck, you can just get off and walk. You're stuck in a train tunnel where you cannot go anywhere in a car with 90 people. And they don't ever fix it. This is not going to get any better until it is completely redone from scratch. And the only way that's going to happen is if the beast is starved. I want to see more people jumping the turnstiles in New York City. I'll be honest. I want to see more people say, you know what? I'm just not paying. I'm going on. I'm just not paying. This needs to reach critical mass so that every single person who is accountable and responsible for this system running like shit gets fired, gets kicked out, and gets replaced with competent people. Because this has never made sense. This is not just the thing unique to COVID. Anybody who took the subway every single day who's not lying to themselves knows exactly what I'm talking about. I ran a house call based business. That meant that all day long I took calls to visit people, do free estimates at their apartments, at their businesses, at their houses, all around the city. I would spend three to five hours of my day from six in the morning to 11 or 12 at night on the subway. For years, I know exactly how bad so many of these lines actually are. And I'm not trying to shit on public transit in general. Public transit can work. Go to another country where their systems are not a clusterfuck and you'll see that public transit is actually capable of being a public good. In the United States, our public transit systems, unfortunately, are complete garbage because they are run by people who are completely, utterly incompetent. And I have gone over this many, many times when it comes to New York state government. If you go to my channel, I have a playlist that goes over recorded government incompetence over and over again. You will have people that work for the city that will admit, the people that work at the Supreme Court will admit that their coworkers are idiots, are fools, are dumb, don't know what they're doing. In this video, you'll have people that work in Albany literally laughing at the fact that everybody knows that the people that run and work in New York city government are idiots. If you go through these videos, you will hear example after example, whether it is me for a half hour trying to get an answer on what the law is, or me speaking with somebody for almost four hours to try and pay a fine that they don't even know how I can do is the people that run this city need to be ran out of their positions. And it's not going to happen because of small issues. It's not going to happen because you vote in a different city council person. It's going to happen when a system gets robbed of hundreds of millions of dollars every single year by people who are fed up and tired for not getting what it is that they're actually paying for. That needs to happen. That really does need to happen. In an ideal world, all the people that are pissed off with these systems would go somewhere else. But if you're not able to do that, consider not paying your subway fare. Oh, I'm serious. I'm 100% dead serious. If you want to see change happen, you have to stop paying the people who are abusing you. And until you do that, 
you're going to get the same results. Okay? When they're talking about this particular subway line that's not working, you have to understand that again, it's, it's not like this subway line that they're talking about that never works properly is only, I'm not, and to be clear, I'm not saying it would be okay if that was the case. This is not just going through poor neighborhoods. This is going through some of the most expensive offices and expensive businesses along the city. This is going through like Midtown Manhattan, Park Avenue, Madison Avenue area, Lexington Avenue area. There's a lot of really, really ex multi hundred billion dollar high end business offices in those areas. Very rich people live in that area and they can't even get that right. They need to, they need to be starved of their funding. It's only once they have a severe catastrophe that any of these people will get kicked out of their positions and replaced with people who can competently run the organization. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. If you live in New York City and you are opposed morally or ethically to not paying subway or bus fares, what I would suggest you do is you get an electric bicycle. You can go to ebikes.ca. The people at Grin are great people, and they're usually happy to give you advice. Even if something costs a little bit more from them, I'll usually buy. Not sponsored, not sponsored, because of the support that I get anytime I have a problem. You will be happier. I guarantee it. You will be happier traveling above ground every day at your own pace, not ever having to worry about some stupid shuttle bus or whether or not a train is or is not going to come. It being on your own bike rather than being shoved in a car like this for 45 minutes you will be happier, I guarantee it. And if you don't have the time to make your own, or you can't afford a new one, what you can do is you can always purchase a used one. You could find Arrow 7 for, for, for a couple of years ago, stuff like that, often for dirt cheap. And as long as you make it look kind of nasty and messed up, the chances of it being stolen go down considerably. What I did with my bike is I bought a circuit breaker, I made it look a little rusty, I shoved it in this crevice between one of the bars and the battery and I had some really nasty looking wire going from it to the seat so that people would think if they did something to it they would get electrocuted and this actually works because the type of people that steal bikes because they can't make money any other way tend to be people that are very stupid criminals are not known for their intelligence and you can often use this against them in very humorous ways and that was one of the ways that I stopped my bike from getting stolen I just made it look like if you touch this thing something very very bad will happen to you and it actually worked I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.